crucified him. And he was dying for the sins of mankind. Now if they crucified Jesus for what he was doing, I heard you that was sure that Yeah.
thank you, Lord.
pre and preach your uncompromising gospel, Father God. Give us ears to hear your words this day, Lord God. And give us a heart to receive your word, Lord God. And help us to be more loving one to another. And these things we pray in the mighty, precious, and powerful name of Jesus. We do pray and ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Jesus Christ. We thank you. 
Jesus name we pray amen In James 1, verse 19 through 25, it said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For wrath of a man worketh not the righteousness of God. Uh -huh. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness, uh -huh. superfluity, uh -huh. of naughtiness, uh -huh. and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able, which is able to save your souls. Right. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. Yeah. For if any man be hearers of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and he goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. And I want to tag this today. Preparation. Now let's take it this way. Practice what you preach. Practice what you preach. Preparation is a key to success. Benjamin Franklin once said by Failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. All right. So in our text, James is giving us some wise counsel on how not to fail. Uh -huh. And you know in this life we prepare for many things. Athletes spend months preparing for game season. Right. Children spend 13 years in school preparing for college. Brides spend as much as two years preparing for their wedding day. And however, it's seldom that we think of the Christian's life as something that we prepare for. Most of us just took the dive one day, accepted Christ as 
our Savior. And then Philip that God will do the rest. And that's partly true, Reverend Roberts. God does prepare us through his Holy Spirit for the journey that lies ahead of every Christian. But you see, I found out that we don't always approach our Christian responsibility with the same passion and consecration that God desires to attract, extract from us. In other words, what do you mean, preacher? I mean, we mean well. But sometimes in this Christian life, we, we get sidetracked. We, we get busy doing things our way rather than God's way. And sometimes we get preoccupied and doing things other people way rather than God's way. You see, we should live our lives as though if Christ was coming back this afternoon. Are you with me, church? And I, I wonder if he was coming back this afternoon, Brother Robinson, would, would he find a list of things left undone? Amen. Yep. And let me say this here, that, that preparation is the key to getting things done Amen. and done well. You see, some people, they, 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 they wait uh, to the last minute to prepare. Are you with me? They cram all of their responsibility, all of their duties into the eleventh hour. And in some cases, it worked. But watch out for those fluid deadlines. They can change up on you. Why, why, why are you saying this, preacher? I'm simply saying this to, to the fact is that Noah, he, he, he did not build the ark in the rain. Uh, are you with me, church? You see, preparation uh, for success includes knowing the direction in which you are headed for. Amen. Yeah, yeah. When I was young, uh -huh. staying up in Silver Springs, uh -huh. we used to walk that old dirt road. Uh -huh. And I walked up on a large turtle. And this turtle was crawling this way in a row. Uh -huh. Cars was passing by, and we was almost at this intersection. Uh -huh. And I thought if this turtle would crawl uh -huh. in this highway, then the next car would come along and kill him and hit him. So what I did, brother, I picked this turtle up. Uh -huh. And I looked up above, and it was a creek running there. Uh -huh. I took this turtle and I laid this turtle down by this creek. Uh -huh. The turtle looked around and he turned around and he went back going the same way. Uh -huh. I picked the turtle up, Sister Brooks, he did the same thing again. Uh -huh. So my brothers and sisters, this turtle was heavy but I carried him. You see, you see, my brothers and sisters, that gave me an understanding. Uh -huh. Not of the turtles, but, but of God's patience with all of his stubborn creatures. Uh -huh. uh, are you with me? Uh -huh. in, in other words, what are you saying, preacher? I, I'm saying this is that how many times uh -huh. in your life that, that God has stooped down, uh -huh. turned you around, and pointed you in a new direction. How many times have you struggled? How many times have I struggled to turn to your own agenda, completely unaware of whose hand has bought you away? So in other words, what happened here is James here. He spells out the plan to our journey with Jesus in four distinct steps. And it's just like, like the Boy, Boy Scout. We, we know about the Boy Scout, Girl Scout. If we want to be prepared, then we got to follow them. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't go in doing it your way. Mm -hmm. Step one, I heard Reverend saying in our prep, is hear the word. Yeah, yeah. That sounds easy. But, but, but I know people who have sat down uh -huh. through hundreds of sermons. Many Sunday school classes. Uh -huh. And you can tell by the way 
haven't heard much. Are, are you with the church? They still live like sinners. They still act like sinners. They still walk like sinners. They still talk like sinners. In other words, they do just what they want to do. The greatest, the greatest temptation in the world is for a person, a person to walk through life doing what he pleases. Ignoring, neglecting, and rejecting God. Are you with me? But James here, he, he reminds us uh, in verse 15 of this same chapter that we in that the result is death. See, see, when you separate yourself from God, the wages of sin is death. If you're not listening to God and you're separated from Him, if you want to live the life of a saved person, you have to be delivered from the great temptation that portions your soul. See, in other words, you must be prepared. And you got to prepare yourself for your battle against sin of self. And you do that by first hearing the word. In other words, in a message, in a sermon, in a Sunday school, in a lesson, in a mission lesson, brotherhood, it ought to be something that was said that ought to help us. How can a person make sure that he is hearing the word of God? James spells it out for us. He, he puts it right here. Everything that we need to know is right in God's word. Are, are y'all with me? It's right in God's word. He already done told us. Long time ago. First of all, what James said, he tells us all. He said, he, he said we have to be slow to speak. Slow to speak. Sometimes before you say something, you ought to be slow to speak. You see, we, we have to learn to listen more than we talk. How can a person learn anything if he does not first learn to listen? Seven, we must never be angry with God's word. If you ever get angry with God's word, you can look out. There's something coming behind it. Are you with me? No person can be saved or conquer with temptation if he reacts in anger against God's word of salvation and righteousness. Some folks now. Some folks now saying, if God loves us, we wouldn't be going through what we're going through. And that's what some folks are saying. Let me tell you something. God loves us. Because some of the same things that we're going through right now, we already been through them before. Hello? Third, what James tells us. And I like the way he got this hymn. Uh, brother Sex, I, I like the way he got it. He said, We must be slow to become angry with others. Uh, are you with me? We must be slow to become angry with others. Anger disturbs and distracts. An angry person cannot focus on God's word. See, you come up in this house, God, God you already had it to wife or something that did, uh, uh, vice versa. It's going to be hard for you to focus on God's word if you're angry. Now, I just said the Bible tells us that. We must be slow to become angry with others. For we must, we must put aside our filthiness. Picture yourself. Take it off a very dirty piece of clothing, and you throw it away. Now, if you leave that dirty piece of clothes around, then what you're going to do is walk back over there and pick up that dirty piece and put it back on. 
Are you with me? Fearfulness and naughtiness, wickedness and evil. Fearfulness and naughtiness are two different things. Fearfulness is uh, what you have been worrying. Naughtiness is what you may be tempted to worry in your future. If we're going to clean up our act, we need to be completely pure. In other words, you either going to love God you either for him or you against him. Only a meek and an humble heart can receive what the Father has to say. I'm going to say that again. Only the meek, like children, uh, uh, and all this meek and a clean heart can receive what the Father says. Now, watch this here. What James tells us in the King James translation uh, of the Bible, James used the words engrafted. He used the words engrafted. Now, when he talks about engrafted, it means to implant, to be born from within. Are you with me? So, in other words, when we listen and hear the word of God, it is planted within our hearts and we hear exactly what God says. Maybe perhaps you don't understand what he said. Maybe, perhaps, you didn't listen and hear what he was saying. But hearing the word of God is just the first step in the journey with Jesus. Step number two. It says, heed the word. Heed the word. Hear the word. Compared to what most people think. It is not enough to hear and know the word of God. We must live according to his word. James said, James, watch this here, what James said. James, James said that a person who only hears and knows the word, it deceives himself. That's what we just read. Are, are you with me? Now, the reason why I say this is because Satan knows the word also. Are you with me? You can know the word, but you got to be a doer of God's word if you know the word. Now, you, you, you can act like you live him, but if you hear the word, you know the word and you'll be a doer. If it's true, those only hear the word that they deceive themselves, then the church of Jesus Christ got some high screen. The church of Jesus Christ got some high screen. Because let me let me say this here. I'm gonna put this in here. We can't think that we can do whatever we want to do and how the way we want to do it. And then Jesus is gonna meet us one of these days and tell us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did faithful over a few things, come on up and I make you over rule, rule over men. Don't keep thinking that. You cannot do wrong and think that Jesus is going to tell us this. Christians, see, see what happened is that Christians sometimes they be satisfied living on the milk of the word who, 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 who refuse to allow themselves to grow. They're the ones that usually fail on God's word. You see, there, there is more church to being a Christian than merely knowing that Jesus loves you. Can I say that again? See, we can say Jesus loves us and, and, and he loves everybody, but he don't love what we're doing. 
And we sin and we don't want to ask God for forgiveness. Amen. They just feel that God would never reject them. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Right. Let me tell you something. I don't care how much you know. I don't know how, how, how many, uh, I don't care how many scriptures in the Bible you know. Right. When death comes, oh. death comes in your family. Are you with me? When sickness comes, sickness comes in your family. Sickness comes in your house. Sickness is everywhere. He doesn't even accept us just because we confess our sin. Each of these are necessary and very important, but they are not enough. They are not enough. God accepts those. Let me tell you what he does. He accepts those who confess and repent. Repentance means that we turn away from our sins and turn to God. Let me tell you something. You just can't keep over and over the same thing for 20, 30 years. You, you just can't keep on doing it. Something some ain't right. Some, some, some not right. Because when God saves you, he comes on the inside of you, Sister Mark. He changed the way you walk, the talk, and act. The things that you do. In other words, you just can't talk. The talk. You got to walk. The walk. Here's another thing that taught me. You can read the word daily, uh -huh. but if you don't use it, you lose it. Are you with me? I can read my Bible every day, but if I don't use it, then I lose it. Have you have you ever knew a scripture and you got ready to tell somebody about that scripture? You couldn't remember that scripture. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. You see, you are blessed, and all of us are blessed. A, a confidence uh, uh, that can never be shaken. A river of living waters that will never run dry. A victory that can never be lost. So, in other words, if you Practice what you preach. If you practice what you preach. Step one, you got to hear the word. Step two, you got to heed to the word. But there's another one. Step, step three says, hold your tongue. James says, we can be religious, but have a loose tongue. We can be religious, but have a loose tongue. The word religious describes someone who is devout. This type of Christian gives great attention to his religion and makes sure you know his religion. And a lot of times they forget about their religion, but want you to know about his religion. But he has a loose tongue. James said, James said, James said, uh, he says back in chapter 3 and verse 8, he said that the tongue is unruly, an unruly member that no man can tame, but God can. God can. If we go to God, he can. And then Peter goes on in 1 Peter 3 and 10. He said, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Tongue lashes are the most important thing of sin for these. Words can be sharper than a two-headed sword. So, so we talk about step one, you got to hear the word. Step two, you got to heed the word. And step three, you got to hold your tongue. But there's one more. And I'm going to be ready to go. Step four, help 
we step back and try to help someone who's in need right now? I, I, I wonder, have we really, have we thought about ourselves running to somebody else? James says that it's not enough to know the word and clean yourself up and learn to hold your tongue. What good is a religion church that helps only you? In other words, if we got religion, we ought to want to help somebody else. You must be willing to help others. We are charged to use our faith to change the world, not just sit out and do nothing. A Christian, a Christian who is blind to the needs of others has a dead faith. James said this in James 2 and 26. James said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. You remember when Jesus was here? Jesus reached out to the lonely, to the grieving, the bedridden, the shut-ins, the widows, the fatherless, and the motherless because of their need for salvation. But in this 21st century, where there is a church in the practical every community that we live in, one thing that we don't have is cooperation of the saints. And I wonder, my brothers and sisters, is that you that James is talking about? Are you striving to be unspotted from the world? Are you determined that no corrupt beliefs distract you from your goal? But I got to leave us this morning, uh, but in every message that I have been preaching here lately, hmm, and I keep telling uh, the children of God that trouble may come your way, but I keep telling you uh, that trouble don't last always. I was reading over in Psalms 30. And the Bible tells me uh, that weeping may endure for a night. But I heard him say that joy comes in the morning. Am I right about it? And you need to know this morning, uh, no matter what we're going through, uh, that God knows the things that's going on with us right now. Am I right about it? And what I mean is that you need to tell your family, uh, and you need to tell your friends, uh, and you need to tell your neighbors uh, that God has power to do all things. Am I right about it? I got to go on now and take my seat, but James said first that you must hear the word, and then he says second, uh, he says uh, heed the word. And then third, he goes on and he tells us we ought to hold our tongue. Am I right about it? And then fourth, he goes on and he says that we ought to help the needy. Am I right about it? And the reason why uh, he tells us this church is because of my brothers and sisters that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Am I right about it?
people. Now, and be embarrassed when I meet him, he said, depart from me. I never knew him. Would it be someone? Bless 
all of us. When we leave here and we go wherever we may go, touch our hearts and bless our bodies in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for Reverend Robertson coming to be with us. And we pray that you wrap your arms around him in the name of Jesus. Give him strength in his body. And then Sister Lewis, I thank you for blessing her to be able to come. And I pray that you just strengthen her legs, strengthen her knee where she will be able to do things which is pleasing to your side. God, we thank you. Really, God, we love you. And our families, our mothers, and our grandparents and our spouses and children who's yeah, yeah. not here today. We 